Hi guys, welcome back to Outdoor Mondays. This is Venator Adventures. Uh, and this week, we're gonna teach you a few, or from my personal opinion, five tips and tricks to make you a survivor instead of a statistic. And what I mean by that is a, a lot of people get stuck in the hills, especially this time of year when the sun comes out, people start to forget that as a climate, we've still got quite a harsh climate. So a few of these tricks are little things you can take along with you just to help that and we're going to say a few bits i'm going to elaborate on a lot of it because these items it might seem simple enough but if i can explain a bit more it means if you can't get you don't need the exact items you just need something to do the job but to start off with what do i think with a survivor survivor is a person who makes sure they don't leave anything up to chance they have everything they need to make sure they can be self-reliant and get themselves out of any situation they are in. Obviously some situations will mean you can't do that. So like if you break your leg, you're gonna need assistance. If you're stuck on a mountain in a storm, you're probably gonna need assistance. But what I'm trying to do is minimize those factors to allow for yourself to either survive long enough for rescue to come or get yourself out of the situation. Let's start off with the first thing. First thing, and a lot of you might have already, it's called a Peshmerga or a desert scarf. These have multiple uses. First off, they can be used for head coverings, if it gets a bit hot, or just to add a bit of cover to your head. If you need to cover your face, you can tie it across your shoulders and make a little bit of a face covering. Just get that if you ever need a covering from your face. It can be used as a triangle bandage. Oh, just bear with me. Triangle bandage. So, obviously, as everyone knows, just use it to help across. And again, it can just be used as ties, as a cloth, as a towel. So, there's multiple uses. And there's something you can fold up quite small in your bag. It's better than a normal scarf or one of these buffs. So, I would recommend one that. But again, with these, you can use anything. Just always have something like a Peshmerga with you. I take them on every expedition. It could be in the middle of the winter and I still have a Peshmerga in my bag. Let's start, go to the second thing. Emergency rations. Emergency rations are not what you think. You need a minimum amount of calories, usually about 500 calories, so chocolate bars or sweets. I sometimes take a ration pack. Really what you want to judge on your emergency rations or your emergency food is where you're going. If you're going for a walk down the Cotswolds, you probably get away with that because there's a lot of pubs about. But if you're going up to Snowdon or up into the Highlands, you're going to want something more, probably like at least a ration pack or something, a couple of hours, like a bag of pasta. So if you need to, you can stop and you can get your energy levels up. Because what you don't want to do is keep trying to go without any energy. But I always take a bit of toffee and a few other bits, like a protein bar. Bits will just keep your energy levels up because when you're low and say you miss your points, you're a bit lost, anything to get your morale up will keep you going or get you at home. Number three, first aid kit. With my first aid kits, I break them down a lot. I probably take a bit too much, but that's because um, as usually helping what I do with taking groups out like my friends and stuff. I'm usually the only one with a first aid kit. I would say you shouldn't be that. All your groups should take first aid kits. And there's a few bits you should always have in a first aid kit, especially in the hills. So in mine, I carry a splint. So like we said earlier, what happens if you break your leg? Obviously you're gonna need to get down, but you're gonna have to wait for support. But what you can do in the meantime is support your leg, use this, that, wrap it around it, make sure it's secure and safe, that your knee can't move where the break is and stop yourself from getting any further injured. Always carry shears or scissors with you because you never know, you're gonna have to cut something off. If someone cuts themselves, rips anything, you're gonna need that with you. In mine, I always carry a glow stick. Make sure they're always in date, but having a glow stick in your first aid kit is key because if you're injured, you want to be able to break it, leave it that, because sometimes 
if your injury is bad enough, that could be the only difference between someone finding you and you being not found. Third, and it, this one's a bit more, if you're gonna go into, you're doing woodsman stuff, I always carry a tourniquet. I would probably say you shouldn't if you don't know the rule. So usually if a tourniquet is not removed after 10 minutes of it being on, that limb has to be removed. So always remember that, just be careful with a tourniquet. Because what you don't want to do is send that toxic blood back into the body because that will kill you. But any of these pieces of kit, if you need any more questions, there's an app on your phone which will tell you about all about first aid. There's many books you can get, but nothing beats some good hard, hard, hard training. And most outdoor centers in your area will offer little training courses in first aid. I would recommend before you go in the hills, doing a first aid kit. What I've got in my hand is something which a lot of people pack separately, but I always carry in my first aid kits. It's an emergency blanket. That is more because if someone gets injured, you don't want them to get worse. You don't want them to get another injury or get cold or get ill, or even yourself. You'll get, you need to focus on making sure you survive. So having stuff to keep you warm, because the longer you're out and the longer you're not moving, the colder you'll get. So we need to have stuff on us to make sure we can fight that. Finally, sterile, sterile alcohol, alcohol, alcohol wipes. Always have these, because if you cut yourself or you need to clean stuff, they're the best thing to clean with. If you don't have them, use water, but try not to clean your wounds with that. You want alcohol wipes or sterile wipes, just because with that kind of stuff, you can make sure you keep the wounds clean. If you guys want, we can do a full breakdown of my first aid kit on another day. But we've spoken enough about that. But let's go over that point. Always have a first aid kit. Always have the stuff. Have it tailored to what you're doing. If you're going up a mountain, make sure you have stuff like trauma bandages, splints, stuff to help yourself. Glow sticks, stuff to keep you warm. If you're cutting wood, you're doing that stuff, cutting. Have a lot more plasters. Have a trauma bandage. Again, trauma bandages galore. Have medical tape, have tourniquets, but always remember, do not put anything in your first aid kit you do not know how to use, or you don't know where it is, because it, that could be the difference between life and death. Fourth piece, I've got a few bonus points, just little bits which were key, but you can go away with not taking them. Watch, always have a watch with you, because if this dies, your phone, so I'm using mine for the speaking, then for recording. You need to know where you uh, your timings, because if you know timings, you know how long you're late by, or anything like that. You can use it to reflect sun off, to start a fire. You can use it to tell where you are against the sun. Mine, you can't really, because it's not got a hand. But most smart watches these days, like mine, has a compass tells you the time. I have an altometer and a barometer in mine and then on the top I have a bezel of a compass. That's quite handy. This also comes with a storm alert. It's the Santo Core. I recommend a watch like this. It won't cost you too much, about £150. So go as outdoor watches. It's not too bad. Uh, but having some watches like these, a watch like this or even just a regular watch with just hands on. Having that at concept of time content and being able to know where you're going is key because if you know the time you know where you are you'll know how long you've been out because some people will get lost and they'll panic thinking they've been lost for a lot longer when in actual fact they could be only gone for 45 minutes but they feel like they've been gone for a good few hours so always remember that because that will play factors into a lot of issues final point and key point and you get one more key point, we'll talk about this in a second, is a compass. Compass and a map. I don't care if you've walked the route a hundred different times, always carry one of these and the map of your area. I've got about 40 maps upstairs of different areas I've walked. 
because what you don't want to do is think you're going the right way and they get detoured and don't know where you are because that turns you from a survivor into a statistic because then you're going to have to get someone to find you or you're going to lose lots of time doing that. I make sure you know how to use a compass and make sure you know how to make a bearing. So about getting like Fred in his house. So we're going to find where our bearing is. If we're walking on that bearing, I'm going to get Fred in his house and that's my bearing now. And that's what we're going to walk on. So I'm walking towards directly towards you, keeping it on there and keeping going. All that kind of stuff, knowing where you are at all times. Don't rely on GPS's all the time. If you've got a GPS, brilliant, use it, take it. But always have the manual stuff with you. Map, compass, because if you don't, you're gonna run into issue, which we don't want. Five, um, another point on that, sorry again. A lot of people use your phones as your GPS. Have a phone fully charged, but not for a GPS in my opinion. Have it for communication reasons. Because if you get lost or get injured, you're going to have to phone search and rescue or 999. So having a fully charged phone will make sure you're safe. But don't rely on it for your GPS. Have yourself manual forms to understand where you're going. And if you don't know what you're doing with a compass and a map, find a course, teach yourself. Any of our viewers are local to us and want any tips and tricks, drop us an email. I'm always up for giving some tips and advice. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old, maps and, maps and compasses, and I love them. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I do. Sixth point, and then I'll go into my bonus. Getting a bit extra one again, because we've broken 20 subscribers. So I'm going to show you an extra one just to say thank you for that. Whistle, or attracting attention. So a whistle, I'm not going to blow it too loud, everyone's still asleep, but attracts attention. You're injured. You need to get people's attention, shout help, but a whistle will reach higher decibels than your own voice. So being able to attract attention is key to making sure you're a survivor. Let's go into a few points I take, but you, I wouldn't say you have to. I take an all weather notebook, so, and a pencil. So whatever happens, if I'm, say a mate falls over and I have to leave him because I need to make a call. I write down the grid, where, where he is, how he's doing, then I go make the call, if we, if needs be. Or if you have a casualty, or if you just don't know, you can just write where you've gone. Okay, but checking the map. Making notes is sometimes key to being the difference between getting lost and not getting lost, or even just staying prepared, writing down weather conditions, checking weather conditions, making a note of them in your, comp in your notepad. Now, okay, it's going to be wind, rain by this point. So you have an idea, prepare. Preparedness is a key to being a survivor instead of, of a statistic. Last one is cord. Cord is a weird one. Some people don't take it. I always take it because you can use it for snares. You can cut sections off to just repair stuff. I've had it before where I was carrying a piece of kit and I didn't want to carry it anymore. So I wrapped it and rigged it to my bag. So cord has multiple uses and it's always key to have at least a couple of strands of it in your rucksack because it's durable, it's lightweight and it doesn't take much space. Okay guys, that's been my list of some bits, six items, and there were so five, but there was a cheeky little bonus uh, of what I think you should take to make you sure you're not a statistic and you're a survivor. But before we go, I just want to say a couple of things about it. Even if you take this, this doesn't make you a survivor. It's all about mentality. And the mentality is preparedness. Always making sh prepare, prepare, prepare. As the five P's go, uh, people, planet equals people performance. I'm not going to swear we're a family channel, but that planning is key. Preparing yourself, making sure you know the weather conditions, make sure you know where you're going. Don't let any like that, don't think, oh, we'll be fine. Make sure you know what you're doing, because if you don't, that's when issues will rise, especially this time of year, because you'll see a lot of people will do stuff thinking, eh, it's fine, and they'll get into issues. You don't want to be that. You want to be the, be the people going out there and acing it, killing it, having fun in the hills. So to be a survivor 
is mentality of preparedness and planning right. Thank you guys. Please like and subscribe. Let us know if you have any other ideas or any stuff you think you would take instead. Or if you think I'm completely wrong, let me know down below. I've been Michael. This has been Venture Adventures. Five, re five pieces of kits or tips and tricks to make you a survivor instead of a statistic. Keep venting.